frosty frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Careful. It's a screw sticking out. It's kind of dangerous. Yeah, it's a little sketchy. Thanks for joining us on the Crispy Corner. My name's Scott. I'm the head brewer here. And I'm here with uh, Shabs. What do you do here? Um, I work in the tap room generally, but right now I'm just packing beers for pickup and for delivery. So yeah, so you're doing like some some to, some of the drive-through stuff. Yeah. But then maybe some deliveries too. And yeah. People need it. Yeah, it's nice. Cool. Yeah. I kind of like the open road, you know, like driving around <laughs> deliveries. Just pick my takeout spot for yeah, the day. And... Just me and the radio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Today we're gonna drink the darkest hour. This is our Czech style dark lager under a mountain in the cloak of a dark forest. Saucy. <laughs> Czech mythology tells of a band of sleeping knights beneath Blanik Mountain outside Prague. Legend states these soldiers will awake and be led by a saint to save the country in its darkest hour. Oh. So Czech style dark lagers are really fun. Most brewers are pretty enamored with Czech style lagers in general, but the one of the most like famous commercial examples would be Fleku fr uh, from Prague, or even like Czechvar dark, fantastic example. And these are supposed to be like, they're dark, but they shouldn't be this like big, rich, roasty experience. They should be still super sessionable and highly drinkable. So let's get into it. <laughs> I'm making a mess. No, that's okay. Worst guest. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> 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 All right, so we'll do a little cheers. All right. One of my favorite parts about these beers is like the, the service style of them. Super classic Czech lager style of service would be, you know, you can basically pick your like level of foam. You know, a little bit foamier than this, maybe like half foam or like all the way down, which they would call like a milk pour basically. Uh, so it's all foam, so you can just take, take a big foam shot. That's like a staple of the style for me would be that like big collar of foam on top and just as you drink it, on the way down, it just sort of stays there, which is amazing. <laughs> We've made a couple of our own like interpretations of Czech lagers. This would be our second. Built to Last was the first, uh, which is actually a new batch coming out shortly. Oh, exciting! Yeah, I for really sure. like Built to Last. Do you like lagers? I've just started coming around to them. I used to be like an IPA only kind of gal. It's kind of funny. Like when I started drinking beer, Muskoka Mad Tom was one of my yeah. like, intro IPAs. Yeah. Did you have like a first beer that? sort of struck um, you. What's it called? Black Squirrel? Oh yeah. They're, what's their IPA called? That's um, from, was that Hop City? Barking Squirrel. That's what it was. Yeah, Barking Squirrel. That was probably my first one. Super hefty IPA. A little bit malty, which is not like what I lean towards in IPAs. But yeah, that was the first one I was drinking. That and like a lot of uh, Old E. <laughs> <laughs> old English. Well, uh, yeah, and some PBR. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a phase where like you just would not drink those beers like PBR or Oldie where you're like, you're like, no, 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 yeah. I, I'm drinking IPAs now. I felt too good for them. I was like, I don't need that PBR right and, now. And how do you feel now? Now I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> same, same, I'll drink whatever. Yeah, I'm care. like, whatever's on the menu is good. <laughs> We're all good in some way. This beer's, I mean, it smells kind of hoppy, like it has a little bit, this, this is like heavily hopped with Czech Saz. Czech Saz is one of the dominant hop varieties from the Czech Republic. You'll see it in most of their lagers in some way. Usually like one of the big aroma hops. But what we've been finding from the style is like a lot of heavily hopped American beers are, are dry hops. It's, it's, it's done late in the process and, and meant for like big lifted aromatics. With these, it's a bit more about like boiling a ton of hops and like they're all have like really low bittering potential so you would like add a small bittering addition with a really strong hop at the start uh, in like classic american brewing but with these you want to boil a ton of hops the whole time that'll just give you like this ingrained flavor and and just a little bit more like oils to it makes it extremely <laughs> thirst quenching i think that's like one of the key things for me to keep this style refreshing would be would be like it's actually surprisingly heavily hopped we made it with a, a few different grains ranging from four malted czech pilsner malt to caramelly munich malt and then made it dark by going with a pale chocolate malt so being care like we had to be really reserved with it so it's not bitter so they keep it really smooth drinks pretty well let's yeah. check it out what um food would you pair with this if you had to we had it with uh, some roast beef last night which Ooh. is pretty good but i think like even just any meats or vegetables on the grill, any any sort of like smoky or charred element. You? Oh my goodness. Didn't know you were going to fire back with that question. <laughs> <laughs> I 
kind of wish I had roast beef right now. Big difference between lagers and ales. I mean, if we were just go back down to like the basics of it, this took about eight weeks to finish, just wow. for perspective. A standard ale for us would take three to five weeks, depending on what it is. They ferment at different temperatures. Ales being fermented a little bit warmer, a little bit faster. Lagers a little bit cooler and a little bit slower. We try and catch as much carbonation naturally. So at the end of fermentation, we close the tank and, and then it builds up over time. And then when we actually have the beer finished, it just pours with this like big frothy collar of foam. Okay, Classic yeah. IPA. Classic. All right, it's the early 2000s. What are your favorite albums? Country Grammar by Nelly. Do you think he still wears the band-aid? <laughs> I mean, I hope so. Huge Eminem fan, so Marshall Mathers LP. Oh, didn't Outkast release an album in the early 2000s? I think so. Stanconia? Stanconia? Stanconia, yeah, yeah nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> your partner works at Tennessee Williams. Sure is he is. bringing home any sweet pies these days? And do you have a favorite Tennessee Williams pie? Honestly, probably just their classic margarita. So good, and I douse it, it with their spicy oil sauce, and I pretty much get a pie any night they're open for takeout. I personally have a lot of time to spend on the internet these days. Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the best thing that you've seen on the internet over the last uh, last few weeks? Honestly, the best thing I've seen was uh, these two farmers that like dressed up their cow like a tiger and did a Tiger King photo shoot. Hilarious! Oh my god! Yeah, very cute. Actually, if you could pull it up, we could see oh. what it, we could see what it looks like on the camera by like holding it in front of it. Ah, <laughs> uh. oh, the interwebs! Oh my god! Right? Their pants are so tight. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a couple fan questions to go to. Question number one. Uh, why do you guys make so many beers, and what's an upcoming beer we should look out for? Why do we make so many beers? You tell me, Scott! <laughs> <laughs> to give the people more selection because we like experimenting. There, there is such thing as too many options. Yeah, yeah, like I'm a small menu kind of person. Like don't give me too many options or I'll just think right. about it too much, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I like having choice in terms of like beer. Like when I go to a craft brewery, I'm always happier when there's like more to pick from. As far as upcoming beers, we have a new batch of Built to Last coming down the pipe. And then we also have a new batch of Avian Principality, which is our American nice. brown ale. One of, the, one of my favorite beers to make. Done it a little bit differently every time, really trying to tweak it and try new things with it. I actually like making a lot of different beers, a lot of different new IPAs and a lot of different new lagers because you can try all sorts of different new techniques. Uh, on one hand, you want to refine something, but we have beers that we make year-round. When you get to do like one-off beers and make new beers all the time, you're like trying new ingredients, mm -hmm. new hops, new grains. So Avon Principality is like a hoppy American brown ale, richer, more full-bodied than like an IPA. Uh, you know what? I'd actually have to like check what's in the tank, so I don't, oh, don't really you know. don't even know. Jacinda has, is making a couple beers, so we have a stout coming up here, did okay. plug that in her episode. Oh, we have a fresh batch of paper salesmen coming up, Mosaic and Galaxy Dry Hop Pale Ale. That one's always been a favorite of mine. It's one of my favorites, like it's just lower in alcohol, it's like 5%. Mm -hmm. Sunsplit's Younger Brother. Yeah, it's juicy, hazy. Different enough flavor profile, mango peach sort of thing as yeah. opposed to like pineapple citrus passion fruit and citrus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we also have, we'll be releasing a fresh batch of Wilderness Gothic Riesling, which is super exciting. That's a barrel fermented beer that we blended with Riesling juice from Hinterland Winery in Prince Edward County. Actually it's split, it's almost 50% Riesling with like 50% table beer. Effectively, time's not waiting mixed with Riesling juice. Nice. Which is cool. So we should be dropping that next week. The next question, rooting in place was awesome. Will you guys do it again? Will we? Will we? I hope so. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work putting on a festival. Yeah. Especially in the winter time trying to figure out, like shout out to Pat for figuring out all the, our events manager for figuring all of that out for us because I think it turned out pretty well. Yeah, um, for sure. Give, give them a thumbs up in front yeah. of the camera. You gotta like... <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought bringing in breweries from all over the world would be a lot of work? I think we actually thought it wouldn't be. We were wrong. We'll probably do it like, we're not sure. We think maybe every two years because of how much work it is. We'll see. Are we going to do some oh. side beers? Oh yeah, sorry. Throughout each episode, we've been drinking a little something else off to the side. Maybe something that we're like particularly fond of or from uh, one of our friends. So today, I have... A nice crisp cold bottle of Heineken, one of my absolute favorites. <laughs> Doesn't need a glass, drinks great from the bottle. What do you got? I have from Bench Brewing Company, their Elderflower Trail. It is a barrel fermented farmhouse ale on 20 Valley Elderflowers. Damn. So it's probably gonna be really good. It's probably very good, yeah. yeah. Whew, funky. Oh yeah. All right, so we're gonna do some rapid fire questions here. Missy Elliott or Lil' Kim? Missy Elliott. Oreo or Smarty Blizzard? Oreo. Star Trek or Star Wars? Is it bad that I've seen neither? 
<laughs> yes. Nintendo or Sega? Nintendo. Mario Kart or Super Smash Bros? Mario Kart, only because I'm terrible at Super Smash Brothers. PBR or Old Milwaukee? Both classic. Um, PBR. PBR. Yeah. The winner. Old Mill <laughs> Ice. Yeah, with the lady on the can. <laughs> there, there is a blue and a red, and I never understood the difference. Me neither, but for some reason I always bought the blue can. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> we should talk those shirts real quick. Whoa! <laughs> So we've got these new t-shirts. Five dollars from every t-shirt goes to support mental health resources for frontline workers, nice. which is amazing. We still have some left. Check them out. They're in our online shop. That's it for Crispy Corner today. So stay home, slay foam, keep it crispy, and thanks for joining it. Bye!